Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Davis. My name is Cliff Omart, and I am the worship associate for this morning. If this is your first time here in person, we welcome you. And I think there are some first time people here. If, um, we hope that you will stop by the welcome table out in the social hall so we can get you to know you better and get you connected. For our online community, if this is your first time here, or if you're not yet connected to our newsletter, please look for a message from our online welcome host or send a message to the person with welcome in their name. We come here together in many ways this morning. Let us take a moment to connect to our online community. However you are joining us this morning, please leave the door open behind you, inviting others to enter too. Now before Wade comes forward, I want to make note of something else really important for today. Has anyone noticed something new in the masthead of the order of service? Mike. There's a new name here. There is a new name. Reverend Angeline Jackson is officially the minister at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Davis. Now, you may or may not know this, but according to tradition, um, the new minister gets a couple of Sundays to orient themselves to the community, find a place to live or whatever. So she's not here today, and she will not be here again next week. I'll be the worship associate again, and we're going to have a recorded message from the Sermon of the Month from June uh, on imagining in faith. So with that, um, wait. Hello, how's everybody doing this morning? Good? Good. Um, Linda and I went to a um, long weekend over in Cobb Valley, which is over in Sonoma area. And there was a um, land acknowledgement from the campground that we were, that this gathering was on. And um, it struck me that we, we read this land acknowledgement and it's like boilerplate. This is for me, so please don't, you know, I'm not saying that anybody else sees it this way. So um, out in the fellowship hall, right by the coffee, I put up a map of the Native American tribes that were in this land um, thousands of years prior to the Europeans coming. And so please, if you go out into Fellowship Hall after service, please take a look at the map. You can see the Patwan Nation, you can see a lot of the other nations that are still with us. So a lot of people don't understand that there were people in the Americas 15,000 BC. So 15,000 BC, that's pretty staggering. And um, one of the things that I find kind of interesting is one of my favorite places is Yosemite. How many people have been to Yosemite? You? So the um, Miwok is it's part of their territory. Um, how many people understand where the word um, Yosemite actually means in the native tongue? I have a few. So the, the indigenous that were there when the, the, and please excuse the term, when the white man came into the region, they kept trying to ask the indigenous, you know, like, what is this area called? What do you call this area? And they kept saying, Yosemites, Yosemites. And so it stuck, right? So it became named Yosemite. But actually in the native tongue, it literally means those who kill. 
So there's history that goes, goes all around our country. Um, and a lot, some people may be saying, okay, so what's Wade up there doing talking about this? You know, it's like, what's, what kind of skin does he have in the game? So my tribe is Penobscot. It's the upper northeast, and it goes from Maine, Connecticut, all the way up into the Hudson Bay region in Canada. And so um, my mom, that's where my lineage comes through, um, my mom grew up in total fear of acknowledging that she was Native American due to the fear of the backlash. And she instilled it in us gently to not let anybody know that we were Native American. So, well, some people may be saying, well, you know, that's old history. So today, the Navajo Nation, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, one third of the nation still doesn't have power. They're running off of solar panels and batteries to power their homes. That's 13,000 families don't have power that we take for granted that we can go over here and plug in and power air conditioning, refrigerators. And also we have a candidate right now who basically stated that his wilderness, which is now Ohio, was hewn out of the rough wilderness and was occupied and it was actually enemy territory. So just when I read the land acknowledgement, please, I'm gonna read it a little slowly and just understand that or the reason why I do it that way is that so you understand that this land that we're blessed to be on has been someone else's land for tens of thousands of years. For thousands of years, the land upon which we are gathered has been the home of the Patwin people, including the Oshadehi Winton Nation today. The Patwin people have remained committed to the stewardship of this land over many centuries. It has been cherished and protected as the elders have instructed the youth through generations. We're honored and grateful to be gathered here today on their traditional lands. Ho. Oh. Chalice lighting today, I'm going to read a poem, uh, a true story by Lee Kynvi. I'm not sure if that's proper pronunciation, but K-Y-N-V-I. This chalice is for the living, the changing, the becoming. This chalice is for losing the script of your life, the chapters about who you are in other people's stories. This chalice is for the lost GPS that was supposed to show you how to get where they expected you to go. This chalice is for skipping the directions, coloring outside the lines, painting, not by number, but by silence, by wild abandon, with a brush you made yourself from light, light deep inside, startling, vivid, a new voice, that already knows you. Finally, a true story. Now please rise in body or spirit, however you are able, and join in singing hymn number 1, 
11 in the teal hymenal return again. I invite you to come to this moment to breathe differently and truly slow down. In this moment, we can reflect and consider what has happened during the week, both the sorrows and the joys. We light the candle for sorrows that are held in this room. We acknowledge the worries and fears, the illnesses and grief. May your sorrows be lightened by being here, sharing it in this community. We recognize the joys that exist in our lives and in the world. We light the pillar candle of joy to recognize the love that was celebrated. This is the time in our service when we have the opportunity to give generously in support of the life of our congregation and its work in the larger community. In doing so, we are reminded that we pick fruit from trees that we did not plant. We draw waters from wells we did not dig. This is as it should be, so long as we dig and plant for those who come after us. There are several ways you can contribute to our offering. You may give via the UUCD website by texting UUCD offering to 73256 or by check sent to UUCD with offering in the memo line. Those in the sanctuary with cash or checks gifts are invited to place them in the basket as it comes around the room.
Thank you for your generosity. Today, we will be pausing, sitting, and noticing. There will be moments of silence, and moments of music, and moments, moments of some poetry. We invite you to meet this moment and this morning as you are, where you are, in the sacred space. We invite you to breathe, pray, set intentions, clear your mind, or just be. Good morning. <clears throat> the last meditation service that we did, um, I was walking around the sanctuary with the um, singing bowl. And some people uh, don't understand or may not understand what the Tibetan singing bowls are all about. And so I'm going to just give a, just a little <laughs> cliff note version of it. Is um, the Tibetans have been using singing bowls for healing and raising spirits and, and well-being for thousands of years. And in the West, we haven't really embrace that until just recently. And um, there's more and more studies that are indicating that vibrations do have an impact on us and that we as living organisms vibrate ourselves. We are actually vibrating right now in this space. And so I'm going to clear, I'm going to do a, a clearing the room. I'm going to walk around the room with the bowl. Please make yourself comfortable. Breathe, relax, get into a nice meditative state. And Mehdi and I will be doing, he's going to be playing the drum. I'm going to be walking around the sanctuary with the singing bowl. So please just sit back, relax, make yourself comfortable, breathe, meditate, get into a deeper state. Okay? Thank you.
Wasn't that a lovely sound and a lovely silence afterwards within the room? So I'm a Jeanette Hogan and a Feldman Christ practitioner by trade where we use movement to create ourselves, actually. And I'm going to invite you to explore some movements of your jaw in order to, with the idea that that will bring um, this lovely quiet even deeper inside. And so I invite you to do that in, in the way that is most comfortable for you. One is just listen, wonder what those words mean, or listen and imagine what you might do if you were doing the movements, or actually do the movements. But if you do them, when you do them, and I hope you will, actually, um, the name of the game is Slow and Small. And so, um, so we're sitting a lot, and we'll be sitting for what I'm asking you to do. But first, if you would like, stand for a moment, and then come back to your sitting new. Can I wiggle? twist, turn, just little movements that make you new and refreshed again. So when you sit down, it's a new experience. As you're ready. <laughs> and then when you're sitting, find your most, I would say comfortable, but I really mean most supportive way to be in the chair. Any given chair re rarely fits everybody. So it might be too short for you, it might be too tall for you. But find the way that you can be most comfortable and feel most supported within your chair today. And feel free to make those minor adjustments as you discover as we go along that something else, some other slight change in position would make you more comfortable. Okay, just checking where I am. <laughs> so now that you have set afresh, <laughs> this, become aware of yourself. If the lights are bright or, or um, the room is distracting visually, let's close your eyes. But you can also leave them open. If you leave your eyes open, don't necessarily look at me because that works you in a certain place unless I'm dead in front of you. So you're comfortable, your eyes are relaxed, soft focus or closed. And take in your sensations now. What is, is your sense of the chair supporting you? Where you're in contact with it? What is your so sense of yourself breathing? As you inhale and exhale, does the contact that you have with the chair change? And in time, bring your awareness to the upper part of yourself, let's say your neck and your head, and particularly in your face, what sensation do you notice are noticeable to you, let's say through your cheeks, around your mouth, across your brow, within your eyes, around your eyes, scalp, neck, ears. You may or may not notice sensations in each of those places. I try to say enough that hopefully most people will have one that they recognize. But if it's none for you, that's okay. That's what your truth is now. So now I ask you, as you're seated comfortably, to begin to open and close your mouth. And what does that mean for you? You can find out how wide you can open it, but if you do that, then pause for a moment and just do half of what you know you're able to do or half of half of what you know you're able to do. So the key is small and slow, and find out what is your experience 
of opening and closing your mouth now while you continue to breathe. And what is your strategy for opening your mouth? So in time, just pause from that for a moment. Is there any new sensations that are noticeable to you? Let's be with them. And what then, try, as you open your mouth, tilt your head back a little bit. So another way of saying that would be, as you tilt your head back, leave your lower jaw where it was. And you can hold it with your fingers a little bit if you want to. So t whoops, am I on? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Tilting the head back is, and leaving the lower jaw given over to gravity is another strategy. And just pause for a moment again. And without deciding beforehand on a strategy, just open and close your mouth. Find out how it feels now. And pause from that. So I pause a lot, giving time to rest, because um, not that the movement is so strenuous or difficult, but our mind is taking in the slight variations that you create and needs time to absorb what it's learned. So wherever you are in your movements, pause for a moment. And then as you're ready to begin again, just open your mouth very, just let your, your, let your mouth be just a little bit open. So we were opening and closing before, and if you go just to like the beginning stages, your teeth are apart, your lips are apart, but your jaw is more or less resting there. And then begin to move your lower jaw a little bit to the right and back to where you began. And try that several times. So if you want another indicator of where it's going, you can put um, your right hand on, on the middle of your chin, and then you can tell where your jaw is going. Don't move it with your finger. Just move it with your jaw muscle. It's going a little bit to the right and back to where it came from. While you breathe, by the way. So it's not gas for air, do the movement, gas for air. It's continuous, both movements continuously, even as your heart beats. And what are your eyes doing as you move your jaw to the right? Are they staying still in their sockets? Or do they want to go along with the jaw? Any answer you give to what your sensation is, to what your experience is, is the exact right answer. So they're only asking for your experience. And I always like to say, this is my little joke, even if you say, what the heck's you talking about? That's your experience and it's absolutely correct in the moment. So pause for a bit. Be, be aware of any new sensation you might notice. And a little bit open and close your mouth. And pause again. And as you're ready to begin again, again, that softly, a little bit open mouth, so it's not like you're staring at <laughs> So, well, let me go back to where I was. Um, your mouth is very lightly, softly open and you begin to move your jaw, lower jaw, 
to the left. And you find out as slow and easy as you can. So sometimes we'll find a little, it jumps over to the left. Maybe it did to the right too. That, that's just a sign to do a little bit less. You can do it so small that, that you kind of not have the jump. And that might mean just thinking it, imagining it, but trying to find the smooth and easy way, not the quick and big way. And you're breathing. And any time it's enough, and come back to the middle and pause there. Take in yourself. If you're experiencing any new sensations that you don't quite like, notice that, pay attention to that, and make a commitment to do less as we go along. If you're experiencing new sensations that you do like, pay attention to them. Find out where your tongue is resting in your mouth. How close together are your teeth as you're resting? How, how much contact does your upper lip have with your lower lip as you're resting? And as you're ready to begin again, Come back to that lightly, softly open mouth. And let's combine the directions. So you choose which way to go first, one side or the other, and then slowly pass through the middle and go to the other side. So it's right, middle, left, or left, middle, right, going back and forth several times, going as slow as you can bear to go. Think paint drying, that slow watching paint dry as you move your jaw to the rhythm of the paint dry, drying. And breathing. And in time, when it's enough for you now, just let the movement get smaller and slower until essentially you have stopped in the middle. And pause and rest again. Take in your current sensations. Is anything different through your face or in your neck or big toe? Just wondering, just wonder. What if now you tilted your head up and down? Does it feel the same as when I first asked you to do it? And open and close your mouth in coordination with nodding your head. When does it make sense to you to open your mouth? And when does it make sense to close your mouth? So we each have our way. <laughs> And what are your eyes doing as you do this? And how big is the urge to make it big? So whatever size you're doing, make it half that size. In whichever direction your lower jaw is going as you nod your head up, have it go the other way. So as you nod your head up, maybe your lower jaw was staying behind and lowering, and your mouth was open. Try a few times to nod up with your mouth closed, bringing your lower jaw along with your upper jaw. And likewise, if that's what you were already doing, try it the other way. Other way being mouth closed as you go up and open as you go down. And go back to your original way and back and forth between the two. 
and then slowly let everything get smaller and smaller until you're resting again. Breathing, taking in yourself. And one more exploration I'd like to ask you to do so you can listen or you can do. Because if you do, do small and slow. So maybe before I said your mouth lightly, softly open, just go there and a little bit more open. And now, uh, see if you can find a way to take your lower jaw forward so your lower teeth are in front of your upper teeth. Very easily, e um, with ease and very smoothly. So yeah, I can do that if I really thrust. Don't thrust, just think about it. Think what it would be. Imagine what it would be if I just slid out my lower jaw and brought it back in. And breathing. And is there effort anywhere else that need, needs or doesn't need to be part of this movement? Like I sometimes wrinkle my forehead or bring my eyebrows together because I'm thinking so hard, how will I do this? And you don't need to do anything about it, but notice. The key is small, slow. Notice what you're doing, bringing awareness to oneself and how we are within ourselves and within the world. And pause again. And one more, if you can bear with. So let your mouth be a, softly open. Move it to your favorite direction. So I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go left, out, right, and back to where I began. So making a semicircle. These are movements we played with when we were children. Not always appreciated by our elders but valuable. And now we can do it again. Very small, very slow. And then when it's enough, pause again. One more time. Let's do the first movement of opening and closing your mouth. What is the sensation of that now? Is there an increased ease of it or not? And if you feel like playing a little left and a little right, find out how that goes. And let your lower jaw settle in the middle. And find where is your tongue? How far apart are your teeth? Are your lips touching or not? and be with your new sensations, and also with the room and the, uh, and the silence around you. That people paying attention to themselves, going inward, bring to their environment.
We're going to go into a meditation space now. Thank you, Jeanette, for helping us relax our jaws, which is always a source of tension. Vicki Souter gave us this information the last July. Um, we did a meditation service a, a few weeks ago, and we're going to repeat that. So. I am Luian, your meditation guide for this round. We are calling Just Breathe. The aim of this meditation round is just to come into our bodies and create sacred silence through our breath. <clears throat> we are going to sit together and breathe in a particular way, which I'll talk through, then demonstrate, then guide as you carry out the breath sequence. Breathe in through your nose for three seconds. This is not a deep breath, but just a slow breath. Pause for three seconds. You don't need to hold your breath. This is just a slight extension of the natural pause between the in and out breaths and then exhale through your nose slowly for six seconds. So this is how we do it. I'll count. Breathe in for three. One, two, three. Pause. Two, three. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six. Let's do this again. Just a slow breath. One, two, three, hold, two, three, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, and continue this to a little sound. Just repeat the cycle of inhaling for three, holding for three, exhaling. We're going to go on to another part of this meditation. And Vicki Souter again gave us this wonderful, wonderful words. As you were slowing your body down with breath, by the third repetition, you were probably already engaging with the monkeys in your head. This time, let's distract the monkeys with a slow call and response and a slow meditative breath between each phrase. Three seconds, inhale, pause, three seconds, exhale, six seconds. Try to keep your eyes closed if that's comfortable for you and your hands crossed over your chest if that's comfortable. As you're doing this, you can say to yourself, I have arrived. I am here. My body is my soul's address. May my heart be filled with loving kindness. May all around me be filled with loving kindness. I am home.
May all beings be well and happy. May all beings free from strifes. May all beings return to love, love, love. Peace be with you forevermore. <coughs> Toward the one, the perfection of love, harmony, and beauty, the only being united with all the illuminated soul who form the embodiment of the master, the spirit of the guidance. May all beings be well and happy. May all beings be free from stripes. May all Beings return to love, love, love. Peace be with you forevermore. Today, like every other day, we wake up empty and frightened. Don't open the door to the study and begin reading. Take down, a, take down your instrument. Let the beauty we love be what we do. There are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. Out behind the ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. I would love to kiss you. The price of kissing is your life. Now my loving running toward my life, shouting, what a bargain. Let's buy it. This is our last round of meditation. Feel free to use the, these minutes for praying, visualizing, setting intentions, breathing, and letting go of doing and becoming a human being. Love holds you. Love bears witness to all your inherent dignity and worthiness. It, it witnesses how you try, succeed, and fail. And it does not flinch. Love will not let go. Love holds all of you. That was by Carrie Holly Hurt. We'll continue for a few minutes and then we will all sing, May I Be Filled with Loving Kindness.
We extinguish our candle of joys and sorrows. May our joys be enhanced and our sorrows be lessened by sharing this today. And we extinguish our chalice by reading together these words by Elizabeth Sell Jones. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry on our hearts until we are together again. And our closing words come today from Universal Rhythm by Israel Bafardi. My friends, when you go from here, know that our hearts are always in a holy place, for we are always connected to one another. <coughs> know that deep down our hearts beat in one universal rhythm. May we each find the sacred space to hear it. Go in peace. <laughs>